You can see? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks for the organizers. My name is Daniel. I'm from Tanzania, created uh, by the St. John's University of Tanzania and Dodoma and the Nelson Mandela African Institution of Science and Technology in Arusha, Tanzania. And my talk that I'm going to share with you uh, is on uh, natural products as serine inhibitors or of the SARS COVID 2 and some insights from molecular dynamic simulations and metadynamics. So, uh, coronavirus 2 and the coronavirus 1 that occurred uh, some couple of years ago, they share more similarities. And this offers a tool of treatment options. Uh, either to target on the coronavirus itself, so we can design some drug or inhibitors that can inhibit the activity of uh, the virus. Or uh, we can uh, inhibit, target uh, on, on the human immune system and or preventing the viral uh, entry to, to human cell. And this is will be the focus of this talk. And so, as we can see here, that the 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 the, the virus has different uh, structures, and so in order to enter into the human cell, it uses the spike receptor binding domain, which it attaches to the angiotensin converting enzyme two. And the experiment, both experiment and theory, have really confirmed that there is a strong interaction between the spike of uh, the virus and the uh, uh, acid 2 enzyme the human which enabled the the virus to strongly uh, attack and have a strong affinity and hence to to enter into the the human uh, body so the motivation is that the uh, the case of, uh, of tanzania so uh, many uh, we are blessed to have a lot of natural product and one of the plants that were suggested and they have been locally also used and have been claimed to be effective in managing the disease. And one of them is this one here that I showed the Tetradenia riparia. And but we really don't know how this uh, compound works, either by acting on the virus itself or by inhibiting the virus into cell and to enter into cell. Uh, Daniel, sorry, question. Yes. How, what percentage of Tanzanians use this plant? Um, I, I cannot quantify how many, but uh, a large number of people have been using this uh, this plant. In, in what um, context? Actually, like in in uh, in foods? In what? Uh, what has been used is what in Swahili we we call it kujifukiza. I, I mean, inhaling the the vapor of it. Ah, okay, so okay, I understand. Push. I understand. Okay. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Thanks. Yeah. But for example, this plant it contains esquitapine and essential oil and some flavonoids. But again, we don't know uh, what it work. So initially, uh, the, the, uh, the I, natural can I, can I just interrupt? I can ask a question? Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes, um, yes. Is that a plant used after the uh, affection of the or or it is used uh, bef before uh, before the uh, this disease. So be before someone get the coronavirus, use this plant, or it is used uh, for the treatment. So before it has been used for um, other diseases, but since the coronavirus occurrence of the coronavirus, now it has been uh, widely used. In. So it is uh, before the disease. Yeah, before the disease was also used for uh, for other diseases, but oh. since the yes. Okay. Okay. So it's not for the treatment. Yeah, it's used for for treatment. Before it was used to treat other diseases. Okay. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yes. 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 So before uh, the natural. Uh, product uh, a group at the University of Dar es Salaam have isolated the number of uh, natural products, uh, including this one I'm um, showing them to the left panel. And this uh, uh, have been tested experimentally and they have showed some antifilo uh, property, but not for the coronavirus. So this was our initial step to, 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 to evaluate if they could have also 
uh, uh, coronavirus uh, inhibition, whether targeting on the coronavirus itself or inhibiting the, the virus from entering the cell. So what we did, we, we, we did some molecular dynamics calculation on this and docking calculation, of course. And then we did the repurposing. So we did the similarity search based on the, the best performing uh, molecules. So in this case, uh, ligand number 15 uh, worked better. And then when we did the similarity search, we obtained three uh, drugs from uh, the drug bank and this uh, approved the drug for other indication. So interestingly, we were interested to note that this molecule, diosamine, has been also reported by many computational groups that is, 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 is a good content to target coronavirus. And uh, our work initially, we, we found that these three drugs, they work by two distinct mechanisms. One of them is especially the first one here and this one, they work by uh, acting on the virus itself and stopping the viral RNA replication. Again, the same, this one here, it works also and it was observed to bind strongly to the interface of the of the virus uh, between the human assay and the the, the 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 spike of the virus. So and the, this is the major focus now. So the up here in green, this is the angiotensin converting enzyme two for from human, and this is the the the, the spike of the coronavirus. And this labeled that the ankylin uh, residues that. Uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the virus uses to attach uh, with very high affinity, and when it attaches, then it can get into the human cell. So we screened some of the natural product uh, from the plant I showed before. There are so some natural product have already been isolated. And so we did the screening targeting only uh, at the interface uh, and focusing on the interaction, uh, especially with this uh, uh, residues here at the interface. And this flavonoid, like for the previous group, this flavonoid showed the more uh, lower binding energy than the other class of the natural products. So this interested us to, to, to evaluate the stability of this uh, flavonoid and to see the dynamics of it. So at first, we want to just to look at the, the, the ligand uh, RMST and the, the distance RMST. So the distance RMST provide the, uh, whether the ligand is remaining at the docking pose or is it changing. So we can see just after a few nanoseconds, it changed from what is uh, initial pose, then going to another pose and the way it experienced some fluctuations and then uh, came back to its original, uh, uh, to the second pose that it changed. So this uh, motivated us to investigate the distance between the natural product and with some uh, residues, the anchoring residues to see whether it's really changing and how it is coming back. And this we, we performed it to 100 nanoseconds. Uh, so you can see here that, for example, tyrosine, this one, 505 and the ligand and another residue from the acid 2 enzyme, both, they show that there is changes in, 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 in the ligand from the initial pose. So the initial pose, as I showed before, is this one here, which is shown a, a lower binding energy. But after some time, it is, it is changing and moving from the original pose. And after 50 nanoseconds, it has been changed and it is really having more Daniel, sorry, I think... There are, there are questions. Mariam, if you have questions, please ask. Hi, it was oh. previously in your talk that you mentioned a plant in Tanzania. I wanted mm -hmm. to know, sorry, it's not related to this slide, but the previous, like mm -hmm. the beginning of your slides, but I wanted to know if yes. uh, this plant has shown to be effective in other human populations, like the ones that are genetically distant from Tanzanians like Europeans or us Middle Easterns? Uh, for other population out, uh, outside Tanzania, I, I don't have any uh, data or information. 
Probably okay. it has been also used, but uh, I don't have uh, uh, more information about the other uh, population outside of Tanzania or okay, Europe or, or as well. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. And then we, we found that the strong affinity because be, between the virus and the and the, the, the AC2 enzyme probably could be one of the reasons that it pushes this oh, link to... Yes, yes. Uh, so these are plain molecular dynamics simulation, yes? Not uh, enhance yeah. something, something. Okay, so yeah. uh, what are the starting configuration of uh, the molecule where you started in your simulation box? Uh, the ligand? Yeah, so so we, we, we obtained the, 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 the initial from the docking pause, the one that showed the uh, lower binding NH. No, no, means initially this uh, ligand is already near the S part or it was in the uh, medium and then uh, diffused into? Uh, so initially we, we just obtained the protein structure from the data bank without the ligand. Okay, so, so where do you put the ligand? the ligand at the interface. Okay, so you put the and ligand? Then we, we, we did the uh, uh, docking. Okay. To, to bring the, the ligand to assess the affinity of a ligand okay. at the interface. Okay, okay, okay. thanks. Okay. Thank you. So then we, we, we wanted then to, 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 to assess that if this ligand is binding at the interface, to what extent does it disrupt the recognition of this uh, uh, hotspot residue? So we focus on, re, on Two uh, on four hotspots let's use between the 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 virus and the the human eyes. So in this case, for example, the up here. So we measure the distance of the virus and the human as enzyme. In particular, now this distance here I'm highlighting, and this is the distance, which really shows that you know the it's within. A, and for angostrum and again we focus another distance uh, the histidine and the telosin this uh, 453 and again we see that there is a, a, a two maximas one populatin here at uh, nearly uh, three angostrum and the one uh, which is uh, nearly 0.4 or, or 4.5 angostrom, but within the limitation of this um, plane, so we, we, we wanted to ascertain, to get more information from maybe some free energy calculation and from enhanced sampling uh, calculation like metadynamics. So before we go to that one, then we did a, a endpoint free energy calculation. So in this case, we do the molecular mechanics poison, uh, Boltzmann surface area and the linear interaction NH. And from the molecular mechanics poison, Boltzmann surface area, we do the energy contribution because our interest is to understand to what extent does this uh, residues they contribute to the interaction and also uh, to, to critical disrupting the recognition. So as we can see here, of course, these residues are the one uh, histidine 34 and other that are responsible for that recognition and the, this less use they are highly contributing to the inhibition and these are from the uh, the enzyme human enzyme s2 and from the receptor binding domain of the virus of course this is tyrosine 505 highly uh, contributing to this uh, in inhibition the bind on the rig and and another this so to supplement this one, we did the uh, renin interaction NH, of which was the binding NH, because we do two independent simulation for a, a ligand when it is bound and when it is a free in, in solution. And the binding free NH was really similar to that obtained from the MMPBCA. So we then were interested to, to understand the influence of water, the dynamic of water, at the protein ligand and at the protein protein interface how this water which is present here is really mediating the interaction and to what extent so we initially uh, started by just uh, quantifying the amount of water at different residues so in this case 
with this he stating that for rising 353 and terrorism uh, 453 and then we, we we present here the larger distribution function and then we are calculating the 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 the, the uh, the residence time for this water to see what, whether is uh, really moving for, for very fast or remaining within this uh, rest use for a long time. So this calculation is still, of course, go, going on. Okay. And then now, yes, yes, yes. Okay, it's, it's and then it's only we, we want to get yes, yes. Okay. Can I go on? Yes, yes. I said only two minutes ah, okay, left. Okay. Please. Thank uh, you. I'm about to finish. Thank you. So then we want to get some insight from metadynamic simulation. So in this case, we select some different set of corrective variables to help us uh, understand what is happening. So uh, we, we use a distance uh, between the, the residues. Uh, and also we use uh, the, the the contact and also we we, we 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 choose to understand the separation distance of the two protein in the presence of the, of the ligand so as an example uh, in this figure b here we show that when there is no ligand in between at the interface the minimum uh, free energy is about uh, 0.5 and when there is a presence of a ligand, and then the distance of this residue changes to uh, about to, to, to one uh, uh, to one nanometer, which is uh, giving some insight that this ligand is able to 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 bit change the, the interaction and the recognition of, of, of this enzyme. And then we are interested in in, in understanding the, the residence time of this drug because residence time is uh, has been uh, reported to, to relate to in vivo bioactivity. So in this case, we have not calculated, but we are going to, 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 to look and to get some insight of um, to how uh, time, what time does it spend at this site? But what we have observed in relation to the two figures here is that when the distance at one, this ligand is still having some affinity with the acid 2 enzyme, uh, the ligand having this affinity with this, and all, therefore disrupting this interaction with the residues, and therefore this becomes more weak, and hence it does not bind strong, and hence it changes, uh, I mean, the binding of the binding of the protein became, distance became large. So as an example here, we wanted to understand the first unbinding process of, of the ligand. So here I just truncated the, 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 to, to, uh, when the drug then is coming for the second to the original, to the native complex or to the binding state. And so from here then we are going to, 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 to calculate the first residence time as, as normally we do, for example, for infrequent metadynamic. And then this, a snapshot here we are trying to monitor the unbinding pathway it seems that as we observed for the mmpbca free energy calculation this ligand it unbind uh, toward the direction of this uh, residue which is from the virus and because initially it was here at the interface and after some time which is in this region then it's going through this way and here it is completely removed from this position and it's going to this position. So these are some insight that we, uh, we, we have obtained, but we're still going on and doing this, uh, this uh, kind of calculation. So I thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, Daniel, for your uh, talk. So uh, we have time for question. Uh, Daniel, thank you. Thanks for your talk. So I had a, uh, maybe a, just to be a bit provocative, um, yes. you know, if you were to use uh, chloroquine instead of your uh, your natural product, would yes. would you what do you expect to see? You think it'll be any different? 
Um, chloroquine has been noted to work on the virus itself. And uh -huh. so I have not seen a report about the uh, binding at the interface and uh, for cell entry inhibition. So I see. maybe there could be something that could be different. But okay. the experiment and the, some theoretical calculation have said it work on the virus. I see. OK. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. has a question. Please ask. Yeah. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, and uh, can you go to slide nine? Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, I just uh, wanted to know uh, what kind of uh, energy is this uh, plot showing? Uh, can you just explain a bit uh, more about uh, it? Yes. Uh, yeah, this is the decomposition energy of uh, individual uh, uh, residues to how much is is it contributing to the interaction of between the protein and the natural product so mm -hmm. uh, in order to obtain this first we calculate uh, the, the 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 mmppca and then in order to get inside uh, further insight on what is happening to each residues we can decompose and see how each residue is is, is contributing to this one Okay. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Any more questions? Yeah, I, I have another question, actually. So, which is related to this. Uh, could you go back to your, that slide, uh, Daniel? So, if I understand this last table, what you're saying is that, um, uh, let me see. So, the sign, so if I was to compare the van der Waals versus electrostatic contributions mm -hmm. um the electrostatic contribution is repulsive no no the electrostatic is attractive and yeah. the van der waals is repulsive yeah that's is that correct but but there's a there's a there's a much bigger change in the in the contribution of the van der waals than the um, than the electrostatics yeah and i mean i would so I would tread with a bit of caution because, um, of course, these are all with the pairwise potentials and the and the van der Waals interaction is, yeah, it's it's the Leonard Jones potential basically, which yeah, um, yeah okay, so uh, it's I would you know I would be cautious, I'd be just be careful about interpreting it. But. Oh, thank you. Okay, okay uh, thank you. Sorry, uh, one question uh, okay. from Ali Hassanari. Why are you saying that the large number of Van der Waals uh, energy is something he has to be careful about? What's uh, the reason for? I mean, no, there are two. So, so there, there are two. Well, two reasons. One is this is a it's a it's a pair potential. This force field. This force field that is using. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, uh, so it, first it, it ignores uh, any electronic many body Van der Waals contributions, number one. Yeah. Number two, uh -huh. the, the total interaction in a force field is, it, the physical quantity is the sum of the Van der Waals and the electrostatics. So yeah. Yeah. Um, you can have a very bad uh, Van der Waals that interacts with the sum of the electrostatics to give you something physical. So uh, you have to be very careful about what it what did the individual contribution means in the van der Waals? Right, right. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. A any more question? No. Okay. Uh, let's thank uh, our last speaker and.